What's up guys, Randus Reviews here with you again. I feel like we haven't been doing enough Millsurp shooting here on the channel lately, so we're gonna do an all shooting video for you guys. In this video, we will be running down 10 of my absolute all time favorite Millsurp shooters. So these are firearms that I enjoy pulling the trigger on more than most any other Millsurp. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button to help it out with the algorithm. And please subscribe to the channel to see all my future videos. Also, let me know down in the comments what your all-time favorite Millsurp shooter is. I have the BZ-52 that we just saw, and now we are taking a look at the Swiss K31. Both of these rifles are fantastic, but in order to keep the video a little bit short, I kind of just breezed over these two. Really great guns, though. Gotta love that Swiss K31 straight pull bolt action. Not to mention the K31 is an absolute tack driver of a rifle. Getting us started off here is one that's going to be a little bit controversial. This is a Mass 4956. The Mass 4956 is a French battle rifle. There's nothing really wrong with the standard Mass 4956 that was used in French military service. But this particular one that I'm displaying in this list is chambered in 308. These 308 rifles tend to have some problems, but in three outings mine has functioned absolutely 100%. And these rifles are insanely fun to shoot. Being chambered in 308, the ammo for this particular example is super affordable. If you have one in the 7.5 French cartridge, ammo is a lot harder to get, but those rifles tend to be more reliable and they are military correct. The blast that this rifle gives off will rattle your world. If anyone is standing next to you, you want to make sure they have ear protection in because it will blow your eardrums out, but that makes this rifle a super fun shooter and I absolutely love it. Not to mention that it has pretty nice aperture sights. The rear aperture is a little bit small, but it gets the job done. And the ability to quick reload with 10 round magazines is always a bonus. The Mass 4956 is most certainly one of the most underappreciated and for that reason affordable full on military battle rifles that you can buy on the market right now. With certainty, one day the price of these rifles is gonna catch up to how awesome they are to shoot. I'm just glad that I got mine when I did. The original design for the Mass 4956 actually started prior to World War II. It was put on hold until after World War II when the Mass 49 came out and in 1956 they went through an update to bring them up to a little bit more modern standard and add grenade launching hardware that you can see on the front end of this rifle. They served in the French military until being replaced by the FAMAS. So really a long-lived military battle rifle. They look cool and they are absolute fantastic shooters. Now we're looking at what is probably my favorite military bolt action, the USM-1917. This was the most issued rifle in World War I to US troops, chambered in 30 6 with a six round internal magazine. The thing that makes this rifle so great is those awesome aperture sights that it has, one of the best sighting setups you will run across on a Millsurp. Being chambered in 30 6 ammo is pretty readily available. This rifle has a Mauser action, making it strong enough to send pretty much any load your heart could desire. And it has that really awesome styling of an infield, because of course this rifle is based on the British P14. The USM1917 is an American rifle that doesn't get all that much appreciation, but I really do love them. And like I said, it might be my favorite bolt action of all time. No favorite Millsurp shooter list would be complete without some SKSs. This first SKS is of course a Chinese Type 56 SKS. We had several videos on this rifle on the channel before. These rifles are stripper clip fed with 10 rounds of 7.62 by 39, making them very affordable to shoot even in today's ammo market. 7.62 by 39 is easily available. They're semi-auto, which always increases the fun level. Battle sight is 100 yard zero, making them dead on the money for most practical distances. The SKS was developed at the very end of World War II, and apparently a select few of the SKS 45s served in the Russian military on the Eastern Front at the very end of that conflict. 
in an experimental capacity. The bang for the buck of an SKS is pretty hard to beat, especially our Chinese variants, but all SKS variants are really great rifles. Yugoslavian, Russian, Albanian, East German, North Vietnamese, some of these are very rare and expensive, while others are fairly cheap, like the Chinese. This Russian SKS that we're looking at now is a pretty new acquisition for myself. I think I've had it for just under a year or right out a year at this point. It is a super clean looking rifle. The manufacturer was 1951. And man, does this thing shoot great. I remember back when Russian SKSs were the same price as Chinese SKSs for the most part. Nowadays, there is a big delta between those two. For the most part, any SKS is assuredly going to be a great shooter. You know I love my semi-auto battle rifles. This is the US M1 Garand, or Garand, depending on who you're talking to. Chambered in 30 6 fed with 8-round M-block clips, making it super fast to reload. One of the most iconic rifles of the 20th century, and of course, the main U.S. battle rifle of the Second World War. I really need more shooting footage on this rifle. It's pretty sad how little I've shot this gun since I got it from the CMP. If you guys want to see more M1 dedicated content here on the channel, let me know down in the comments. Just having some difficulties finding the time to produce all the content I want to here lately. Nothing quite gives me the same feeling as hearing that ping. Back-to-back -back U.S. firearms here, and the only pistol that will be featured on this list. The M1911A1. This was from the CMP. Of course, we're going over my favorite Millsurp shooters, and this is my absolute favorite Millsurp shooter handgun, bar none. They all fall to the 45 ball. And the 1911 definitely puts those 45s on target easily. Even though this pistol is from World War II, it shoots as good as any modern handgun does nowadays. The reliability is fantastic with ball ammunition. The sights leave a little bit to be desired. They're kind of small and old school, but that hasn't stopped me from absolutely annihilating some steel with this pistol. The 1911s are regarded as one of the best pistol designs ever, and for good reason. Even the original old school 1911s really do pull their weight in every way when it comes to both combat and the shooting range. Now we're looking at a rifle that's probably been featured here on my channel more than anything else. And that is the British number four Mark I Lee Enfield, the main battle rifle of the British Empire in the Second World War. These rifles are chambered in 303 British, a cartridge that is roughly equivalent to a 30 6 Although it is a rimmed cartridge, that can cause issues with certain ammo and certain rifles. In regards to rim lock, these are fed from five round stripper clips. It has a 10 round detachable box magazine, giving you a little bit more firepower than most other bolt actions of the era. The sights on the number four are absolutely fantastic. One of the best you'll run across on any mill serp. Very similar to the M1917 we talked about earlier. The action itself is super smooth and fast. It has always been renowned for that. As long as they're stocked up correctly, they shoot Pretty dang accurate. All in all, I consider the number four infield one of the absolute best military bolt actions ever fielded. They have it in the looks department as well. I love the way that the wood hand guards go all the way to the front and terminate in that nose cap. Just something about the lines of this rifle make for a very handsome firearm. I don't know that the British took that into account when they were designing it, but Whoever did design it made a really good looking rifle. This particular example is of course my number four C grade that I picked up from Royal Tiger Imports and then refurbished myself. And it has turned into one of my favorite shooters in the collection. I probably have more rounds out of this than any other bolt action that I've shown on the channel. 
In today's market, you can still pick up a number four infield for less than $400. They can be a little bit difficult to find for that price point, but they can be found. Anybody that I talk to and they want a recommendation on a Milser rifle, it's hard for me not to recommend a number four. The only issue you run into is that 303 British ammo is expensive and hard to come by in quantity. Man, that's a smooth action. Love the number fours. The number one is a fantastic rifle as well, but the sights on the number four is really what pushes it over the top for me. Now we're taking a look at the venerable M1 carbine. This is a 1944 dated M1 carbine made by General Motors. The M1 carbine is a little bit controversial in regards to being a shooter in that they have always been plagued by reliability issues. But for the most part, it seems that those reliability issues stem from the reuse of magazines that were designed to be semi-disposable. The M1 carbine magazines are very fragile and not really meant to be reloaded and used over and over and over again like we would expect from many magazines. As long as you keep a fresh magazine with good spring tension in these rifles, they function very well. The 30 carbine cartridge is very light recoiling, making this a great rifle for young shooters. It has absolutely fantastic aperture sights, making it very easy to make hits with this rifle. Its size, portability, and ammo capacity, being 15 rounds, makes it an awesome little plinkster. And the history that comes along with these rifles from being World War II veterans themselves makes it all the cooler in my opinion. Anybody that shot my M1 carbine has absolutely loved it and wanted to get one themselves. Now we've made it down to our last rifle on the list. And I'm not really talking about this rifle specifically. This is more of a category of rifles. We're talking Mausers. You can have any list of awesome military surplus shooters without at least mentioning Mausers. The action on Mausers is just so fantastic. And across the board, they make really great shooters, especially if they are in really good condition. Like this Yugoslavian M2452C, which we've done a previous video on. Everything about this rifle is pretty much in like new condition, making it the best shooting Mauser in my collection, and that's why I made it on this list. I particularly like 8mm chamber Mausers because of ammo availability. The recoil provided by the 8mm cartridge makes shooting very fun if you're not recoil shy. Personally, I like a heavy recoiling rifle. It increases the level of enjoyment I get from shooting for whatever reason. The Mauser action is smooth. The Mauser action is strong. These rifles are accurate. The sights on Mausers are usually a tangent leaf. That leads to harder sight acquisition, in my opinion, than what you will get with some of the other rifles we talked about in this list. But those sights are still generally pretty precise and can make for some pretty good groups. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was something a little new for the channel. If you like this format, let me know and I'll do more videos like this in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to catch all of my future videos. Thanks so much for checking it out, and I will catch you guys in the next video. See you then. Peace.